This is paper chromatography separating solution components by intermolecular forces for AP chemistry. So what I have shown here is uh, the 2017 AP chemistry free response question, just the prompts that shows uh, a sample undergoing chromatography. And this would be before and after. And what we're going to do is talk about what these results show. So paper chromatography separates solutes from solvents based upon the intermolecular forces. So let's do a quick review of that. If we have similar intermolecular interactions between solute and solvent particles, then the compounds are soluble in each other. For example, for methanol and H2O, there is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. For methanol and chloroform, both molecules are polar, so are there are dipole-dipole attractions. And actually, let me amend this just as a little further review. We also have dipole-dipole attractions here, which I'll just abbreviate DD, and we have London dispersion forces. For the uh, methanol and the chloroform, we also have the London dispersion forces. Now, when we get to two nonpolar molecules, in the case of octane and hexane, then the only intermolecular attractions are due to dispersion forces. So remember the phrase, like dissolves like. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how paper chromatography separates compounds by their intermolecular forces. We're going to start with this animation from Footprints Science, where we're going to do a chromatography of sweetie food dyes in water. And we have food dye A, B, and C. Uh, we're going to be doing a chromatograph of the blue sweetie dye, which will be X. So first the, uh, the sweetie is dissolved to free up the dye. Then we take a capillary tube, which is like a very small straw, and place very small amounts of the dye on a position on the chromatography paper. Then we're going to take our known dyes, dye A, dye B, and dye C. Notice they're all on the same line along the bottom of the paper. Then we're going to put them into water in this case. The water travels up the paper by chromatography action, carrying the dyes with it based on how similar their intermolecular forces are to water. When we're all done with the chromatograph, we can identify which dyes are present by looking at what matches in terms of how far the dyes have traveled up the paper. So we can see that our unknown X has dye C in it. They're on the same position. And then we've got an unknown dye that doesn't match up to any of the other dyes. So let's take a look at this and add some new terms here. The term we're going to add is RF. It's called the RF factor. And it's a ratio of the distance traveled by the compound. So this would be the distance traveled by the compound. And that is going to be compared to the distance traveled by the solvent. So the solvent goes all the way up here. And in both cases, notice that we are starting on where we dot our die, and that the solvent is below the level of where we dot the, uh, the compounds. If the solute has more affinity for the water, it travels up the paper with capillary action easily. If the solute has more affinity for the paper, then it spends most of the time on the paper and does not travel very far with the water. So water is a polar solvent. So if we are to call these, let's call these A and B and C. A is the most polar compound and B is the least polar. So let's come back to our chromatography of the sweetie dyes. So our question here is which dye is most polar? A, B, or C, and you need to explain your answer. So take a look at this. 
you should have answered that B is most polar because B traveled up the paper the farthest with the polar water. Thus, B's intermolecular former forces were most similar to waters. Now let's take a look at comparing the response factors, RF. RF is the distance traveled by the solute, so that would be A, B, or C, those are our solutes, compared to the distance traveled by the solute front. So the RF of A, I've drawn a line here, would be 1.20. So there's our 1.20 divided by the distance to the solvent front. And there's our distance to the solvent front. The RF of B would be 3.45. 3.45 divided by 5.0. So this area up here is going to be 5.0 all over, over and over again. And that's 0 0.690. And then RF of C would be 2.28 centimeters divided by 5.00. Now let me draw your attention again here to lining up where you begin to the measurement with where you dotted the samples. Now, response factors are used because that ratio will remain constant as long as we use the same solvent system. So let's see how that works as we look at that AP problem. Here's our free response question. Uh, a student investigates various dyes using paper chromatography. The st student has samples of three pure dyes, A, B, and C, and an unknown sample that contains one of the three dyes. The student prepares chromatography chamber shown above on the left by putting a drop of each dye on the indicated position on the chromatography paper. And they tell us that the chromatography paper is polar and then that we're using a nonpolar solvent, so a nonpolar solvent. The developed chromatograms are shown on the right. So the first question, which dye, A, B, C, is the least polar? And you need to justify your answer in terms of the interactions between the dyes. And then B, which dye is present in the unknown sample? Justify your answer. So I want you to pause and solve the problem, and then go to uh, restart the video. All right, um, which dye, A, B, or C, is the least polar? Justify your answer in terms of the interaction. So this is taken off of the scoring guidelines. Dye C is the most polar because it moved Di, di C is the least polar because it moved the farthest, okay? That is your answer. You got one point for that. The next part is you have to have your justification. So you could have said that nonpolar dyes are more strongly attracted to the nonpolar solvent. So you had to mention that the dye was nonpolar and the solvent is nonpolar. Or you could have said that nonpolar dyes are least strongly retained by the polar paper. The next question is which dye is present in the unknown sample? Justify your answer. So here's our chromatogram right here where we have all three components present. And notice that our solvent front is very different lengths here. So we can't just compare how far the dye has traveled up the paper. We have to look at the RF factor. So remember, RF is going to be equal to your solute distance over your solvent distance. So if we look at this first 
one. There's our solvent distance. And let me uh, mark how far A traveled. A traveled about halfway up. If we look at how far this die traveled, it also traveled about halfway up. So the unknown sample moves to a position that is midway between the origin of the solvent front, and so does die A. So what we had was an RF that was approximately equal to one half, and that's how we knew that we were looking at the unknown being A. And that is the end of chromatography.